In this video, I'm going to share some tips on how to deal with loose skin, how to tighten up your skin, and to do it naturally so you could hopefully avoid some of the surgeries they do or more invasive type treatments. Now, what exactly is loose skin? Well, your skin has been overstretched to the point where it has not come back to its original form. It's like taking this rubber band and stretching it out, but the rubber band doesn't come back to the original form. So what is going on with that? Well, there's two main problems, a problem with your collagen and also a deeper fiber called elastin, which is supposed to give the collagen some elasticity. And so the question people have is, should I just start eating more collagen? Will that help? Typically, it is not a lack of the consumption of collagen that causes this problem. Usually this problem comes from getting older, losing a lot of weight can produce loose skin, excessive sun exposure, going through pregnancy, smoking has a risk factor, being a diabetic can give you a lot of loose skin, or even going through a lot of stress can create a lot of breakdown of these collagen fibers. So let's just dive into all the different component parts and the things that you can start doing immediately. Let's start with hormones, okay? You have two different sets of hormones. You have those hormones that build up your collagen and elastin, and then you have hormones that break down the collagen and connective tissue within the skin. And the main hormone that does that is cortisol. And cortisol is an, a catabolic hormone, which means it breaks tissue down. It breaks proteins down. And collagen and elastin is protein. So of course, you have the stress component that activates cortisol. On the flip side, you have hormones that are do the opposite. They're anabolic hormones, like growth hormone, which is also everything about anti-aging and burning fat. But growth hormone has a very specific purpose into helping proteins grow, muscle, collagen, connective tissue, et cetera. And there's three main ways to spike growth hormone. Number one, high intensity exercise training with specific emphasis on intensity. The more intense you do this exercise, the more stimulation of growth hormone you're going to create. So what would that be? Well, sprinting, hopping on some type of elevation that's called plyometrics, spin bike, anything that involves intensity. But the key is keeping it short so you don't overtrain. Thus, high intensity interval training, right? So you're not going to do sustained high intensity. You're going to do short bursts of high intensity with lots of rest in between. So you might rest for two, three, four, five days, making sure that inflammation and that uh, recovery is happening. Also, what inhibits growth hormone is glucose. So this is why you need to be on a low-carb ketogenic diet. Now, the other important factor with growth hormone is getting enough sleep, which also crosses over to helping you with the stress. So if you're trying to build up growth hormone and you're not sleeping, is going to be a huge problem. If you have a problem sleeping, you probably need to watch some of the videos I have down below regarding that one topic. But in this video, I'm just going to cover all the different points and then you can see what you need to focus on later. This next thing is very interesting. There's another anabolic hormone, uh, anabolic meaning building up proteins, and that is insulin. Insulin induces or triggers new elastin. Remember that uh, type of uh, connective tissue that allows the elasticity in your skin to keep it like a rubber band? Well, insulin triggers that, which is fascinating because you would think just the opposite because you're probably thinking diabetics. Well, in diabetes type two, um, you have a situation where you have insulin resistance. You have a lot of insulin going through the body, but not in the cells because the cells are resistant yet the other parts of the body might have too much insulin. With diabetes and insulin resistance, which is the majority of the population, you have a situation where you have an insulin deficiency, which could definitely create a problem with insulin. So how do you correct this and get more insulin? You basically fix insulin resistance, and you do that with the ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, and you also do that with exercise. Now, the other problem with insulin resistance is it blocks your ability to get fuel, get nutrients, and receive amino acids. So the very 
building blocks of protein that you need to build for collagen and elastin are going to be inhibited when you have insulin resistance. So ultimately, part of this plan has to include fixing insulin resistance to be able to then pull in these amino acids and also prevent atrophy, which is a loss of muscle. All right, the next thing I'm going to talk about is related to collagen and elastin. There are cofactors, there are nutrients that help the development of collagen and help the creation of elastin. And the most important cofactor, okay, is vitamin A. And I'm not talking about what most people think about vitamin A, which is beta carotene, which is the precursor. I'm talking about the active form of vitamin A, retinol, which only comes from animal products, right? Like egg yolks, cod liver oil, fatty fish, butter, versus spinach, which has the beta carotene, but that has to convert into the active form. And a lot of people don't convert very much of it. Unfortunately, they they change the definition of vitamin A to mean both the precursor, beta carotene, as well as retinol. But they're two completely different molecules. So vitamin A is a really important cofactor for building up collagen. In fact, all of the fat-soluble vitamins are really important in your skin. And so this is why going on a low-fat diet is very bad for skin health. There's a diet um, that I came across while I was in practice. People were doing this diet called Ideal Protein, right? Well, was it ketogenic? Yes, it was low-carb, but it was also low-fat. Typically, the healthy version of the ketogenic diet is not low fat, okay? It's higher amounts of fat and moderate protein. In this diet, it was low fat, low carb, and the protein that was recommended were in these uh, packaged foods like soy protein isolates. So you had this lean process protein that they were giving these people. And what I noticed, a person in this program They just look older with their skin. The skin looked very unhealthy. It looked like it aged. It was dried out. It looked wrinkly. And so did the hair. So you can tell a lot about what's going on internally by just looking on the external part of someone's body. And the more low fat you do, the less fat-soluble vitamins you're going to have. And your skin needs a good amount of fat. The next uh, cofactor that's really important in collagen and elastin, especially is iron, but not your regular iron, the heme iron, which is the more bioavailable iron, which is in red meat, it's in shellfish, it's not in vegetables. That's the non-heme form of iron. You need the bioavailable form. So just the fact that I mentioned these two cofactors tells us what kind of diet you need. You need to do animal products that are not lean, okay, that are a bit more fatty to get both the retinol as well as the iron that you need. So if someone is going to do a plant-based vegan diet, they better figure out how they're going to get these key nutrients. I'm not saying it's not possible. You can do it. It's just a lot more difficult. Unfortunately, a lot of people who do plant-based end up eating too many grains, the omega-6 fatty acids, which just fill their body up with inflammation and worsen the situation. All right, the last cofactor is vitamin C. And I want to mention something about vitamin C. Vitamin C, well, you probably heard that it's connected to your your collagen, but most people are taking the synthetic version of vitamin C. It's not the type that comes from nature. So the best way to get your vitamin C is to make sure that you're either doing a food-based concentrate or you're doing foods that are high in vitamin C. And one of the best foods for that would be sauerkraut. Sauerkraut, hands down, has more vitamin C than any other food. It's like 10 times the amount of vitamin C that our bodies require. But you can also get vitamin C from peppers, from berries, things like that. The next topic is exercise. Exercise is a necessity, but make sure you don't overtrain. When you exercise, you're creating new vascularization. It's called neovascularization, and you're getting new blood vessels where you're carrying more nutrients and more circulation, which is what you want to do. You're also going to build up more muscles just underneath the skin to fill in this gap that occurred from the overstretching of the skin. So it will fill up the space and give you a nice appearance that there's less loose skin. And of course, exercise will stimulate the growth hormone if you do the high intensity interval training. And then there's prolonged fasting. Okay, prolonged fasting 
gives you uh, what's called an epigenetic effect uh, on skin because you're putting your body into an autophagy state where it's recycling old damaged proteins. And let me explain old damaged proteins. When someone has insulin resistance or they're a pre-diabetic or a diabetic, they have a lot of glycation going on. What is glycation? Well, it's a situation where you're eating too many carbs and this protein is combining with the sugar to make the protein unavailable. So a diabetic has a lot of glycated proteins and that's how they measure it. Uh, in A1C, for example, is a situation when you have this average blood sugars for three months. So we have this interaction between a certain amount of sugar with your protein in your blood and it's um, creating damage, okay? And you can measure that with this test and you can see how much or how little you have of this glycated uh, effect. But that damage or glycation effect also happens in the eyes and the kidney and the arteries and the brain and the nerves all over, but it also happens in the skin. So if you have glycation going on in the collagen and elastin, it's going to make that tissue unavailable and it's not going to stretch and be elastic anymore. It also happens in your arteries too, which can lead to high blood pressure. So the cool thing is that you can get rid of some of this glycation by doing prolonged fasting, like three days or longer. And when you do that, your body starts to clean up this uh, damaged protein and recycle it and uh, rejuvenate it. So that's a really cool thing that you can do. And the next thing is part of the last two things I mentioned, which is basically you're creating a, a hermetic effect, which you're adding a little bit of stress to the body to cause the body to adapt and become stronger. So prolonged fasting gives you a hermetic effect. So does exercise. But there's other things too, like heat and cold, putting ice cold water on your face and then putting warm or hot water in your face back and forth can create this hormetic effect. And there's some interesting research on that, which I'll put down below. Creating this hormetic stimulation of your skin cells and causing uh, the tissue to tone. But again, that's for loose skin on the face. But what if it's on the rest of the body? Well, then you're going to have to do it for the rest of the body. Now, I want to mention something about sun for a second. Because um, too much sun is very bad on your skin. And what I mean by that is if you expose to the sun to the point of burn, but a little bit of sun, which is the point before you burn, is a good thing on a regular basis because it creates a hermetic effect that can actually stimulate healthy skin. But that also depends on how much melanin you have, the color of your skin. And if you're very, very fair complected, you're going to burn very easily. So that is the other variable you have to watch out for. So I covered a lot of different things that you can do to improve your skin right now. Pick one or two of them and just get started and keep working on it over time. But out of all these points, I think the most important one for your skin would be prolonged fasting. Now I have a video on this, which I also include um, an additional thing you should do if you have loose skin, if you're doing prolonged fasting, and that is taking certain amino acids. So that way, you're not going to really break the effectiveness of your fast because you're not eating like protein per se. You're eating the building blocks, which is very low calorie. So you can get the benefits of fasting, but also get the benefits of the amino acids that can help build this connective tissue and elastin. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.